I welcome all of you to Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Grace um, Keshwanand Prabhuji on the call to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.24. Um, Hare Krishna Prabhuji, are you there on the call? Hare Krishna. Yeah, he is not there, Mataji. Hmm. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble hmm. obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for joining and giving your valuable association. You can take over the call, Prabhuji. Yeah, fine, fine. Um, yeah, so I think we are reading second canto and third chapter and 24th verse. Um, uh, can you all just, just hold on a minute? Yeah, is uh, I think, uh, Okay, so is my voice clear to all of you? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, fine, fine. So, yeah, I think we are talking now uh, second canto, third chapter, and thirty-four verse. That's what we are talking about. And let's see what can be done here. Hmm. So uh, the verse goes like that. The verse goes, Tadashma saram hirdayam batedam yudgrahiya manair harinam adhihya navikriyet atha yada vikaro netre jalam gantra rohe shuharsha. Uh, Shila Prabhupada writes there, Suddenly that heart is steel framed, which in spite of one chanting the holy names of Lord, with concentration does not change. Next as he takes place, tears fill the eyes and the hairs stand on end. Purport uh, is actually too long. So just to save time, I'll just, I'll just quote from the purport as I continue to be lecture and explain what's happening and I'll just, I'll just begin uh, with, the, with the lecture now um, but before that let me offer an invocation uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhagavate the Vedanta Samaniti Namaya Namaste Saraswati Devi Gurvani Prasharana Nirvisheshu Nevati Paisha Deshtarini So, uh, okay, this is the verse Tatashma Saram Hidem Vatedam Yadgara Yamane Harinama Dehe Navikriyet Atha Yada Vikaro Netre Jalam Gatra Rohe Shuharsha um, Certainly that heart is steel frame which in spite of chanting the holy names of Lord with concentration does not change when ecstasy takes place, tears fill the eyes and hair stand on end. Very, very, very important verse uh, and a very mature verse. And also, uh, this verse is also an evidence that Srimad Bhagavatam is a ripened fruit of all Vedic literatures. And I'll tell you how is it. Uh, this verse is also very important to understand what exactly we are doing in ISKCON or, or let us say in devotion. Uh, and that also I will tell you uh, as I continue to explain. And also this verse is important uh, to to actually differentiate between what is a Sahitya or a sentimental person and what is a pure devotee. Who is a Sahitya and who is a pure devotee? That, that distinction. This was, in other words, it's important to 
have a sense of discrimination. And that's why this verse is also important. So, so, so this verse is important for all these, all these, uh, all these. Uh, uh, so, so, so we are trying to, uh, so we are trying to understand this verse now. Uh, I'll explain all these points how this is important. Okay. Uh, also, this verse is important because it is often quoted verse by many of our charyas and many of our commentators again and again and again. So the importance of this verse cannot be undermined. That's why I chose this verse today in spite of the fact that, that your call, your whole, uh, I mean to say your sequence was from fourth canto, but I requested to speak on this verse. I thought it's very relevant and very important and I had been reading, I had been meditating on this. I thought I'll share with you. Okay. So let's just right, go into this verse. Now, what this verse is? Tadashma saram hirdayam batedam. Now the word used is hirdayam. Uh, heart. Hirdayam Prabhupada translates as heart. Or if you read the purport, Prabhupada translates heart as mind. So heart or mind, it's all the same thing. Or um, you can also translate heart as as uh, Prabhupada translates as um, the whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of living being. That's the second paragraph of this verse or the purport and the first line. The whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of living being. Now, that means heart can also be understood in the terms of sobhav, in the terms of Sobhav means the character of the living entity. Mm, the character, or if you, uh, I mean to say, it's uh, Sobhav. Yeah, Sobhav can be translated as character. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is there any word which we can use for Sobhav? Uh, let's see. Nature, the nature of that person, the personality. Let's say the nature and the character of that person. In fact, Krishna says in Bhagavatam, Sobhav vijayam iti shorayam. Real heroism, real victory, real power is to have victory, uh, is to have victory over your own subhava, your own character, your own personality, your own uh, character is made of habits and deep-rooted desires. Real victory is to have, real heroism is to have victory over all those things. And that's what is the point here. Hirdayam means heart, heart means mind, mind has desires and habits which form a character and character is forms the nature of that person or the whole personality and, and that is called Sabhava. And Krishna says real heroism is to conquer your own Sabhava, is to change your Sabhava, that's the whole point. Uh, this is in Srimad Bhagavatam, Krishna says, Sobhav Vijayam Shoryam, that's 11th canto. Uh, Krishna says that, I think that's 11th canto, 24th chapter, something like that, you can see on folio. And then Srimad, and also in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Sobhav Adhyatma Uchyate, that's in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Krishna says, what is spirituality? Adhyatma, what is that? How do we define spirituality? Uh, Krishna says, Spirituality uh, means to change one's sobhava. That's how Krishna defines spirituality. As Krishna doesn't define spirituality as chanting or reading or maybe honoring prasad or maybe meditation. He doesn't do that. Although we know chanting and reading and prasadam and Whatever it is, I mean to say, this is this is devotion. This is spirituality. But Krishna doesn't do that. Krishna defines spirituality as sabhava dhyatma chaka to change one's nature, to change one's character, to change one's sabhava. That's what Krishna defines. Now why? Why is that? Even Prabhupada writes in the purport in the second 
paragraph. That's what I'm quoting. Prabhupada writes, the whole process of spiritual culture, it's directly from Bhagavad Gita. So, bhav adhyatma uchyate. Shil Prabhupada is translating from that line from Bhagavad Gita in English. So, bhav adhyatma uchyate. The whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of living being. Heart of living being, as you've already discussed, it means sobhav or character. The heart of living being, um, in the matter of his relationship with Supreme Lord as subordinate servant, uh, which is his eternal constitutional position. Now, his, this is very, very, very important line. I mean to say, you can you can put very raised to the power a um, million times, that's all. The whole process of spiritual, Prabhupada says, the whole process of spiritual culture. Now, what is the process of spiritual culture? Iskon or any other version of Sampradaya, Nimbark, Madhva. What is, a, what is spiritual culture? Okay, uh, what is the whole process of spiritual culture? Okay, what's that? Chanting, reading, temple, devotees, prasadam, festivals. This is the process. What we are following. Process of devotion, Prabhupada says, chanting and hearing is the best process of devotional service. But what's the aim? That's the whole point there. What's the aim of doing this? The aim is changing the heart of living being. That's the whole idea. Or changing the sobhava or the character of living being. Or breaking the habits of the living being. Or, or inculcating uh, good qualities in the living being. That's the whole uh, aim of our spiritual process. Or Prabhupada writes, or, or understanding, or, or, uh, or, or getting this conviction that I am subordinate to the desires of Supreme Lord Krishna. That conviction Ashraddha Shabde Vishwas Kaya Sudhira Nishchaye Krishna Karam Krit Kaila Sarv Karam Krit Hoye That's what Mahaprabhu defines faith as. Um, get the conviction that I am subordinate to Supreme Lord. I am subordinate to the desires of Supreme Lord. I am not independent. I cannot do anything independent. That, that thing, that feeling, that conviction of losing independence of losing that speculative independence and gaining a, a mood of dependence on Supreme Lord or gaining a mood of obedience to the desires and the orders of Supreme Lord in any condition maybe in reverses or calamities in fear or when you are tempted by lust or anger Still, I must follow God, Supreme Lord. That conviction, that is what is change of heart. You see the point there. Subordinate servant is eternal constitutional position. Now the whole, and that is why Krishna defines spirituality as subhav adhyatma. Krishna says spirituality or uh, adhyatma is change in one's subhava, change in one's nature. That's what Krishna defines. Krishna doesn't say spirituality means chanting and hearing. Why? Because now Krishna is focusing on the goal of chanting and hearing. That's the whole point. Krishna is defining spirituality not in the terms of process, but in the terms of goal. Now, now what is more important, process or goal? Well, both are important. Both are important. What is more important, prayojan or abhidhai? Well, both are important. But the whole point is, if if you are so picky and choosy and if you ask, well, 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 I want to ask you, what is more important, process or goal? Choose. So what are we going to do? What are we going to choose? Well, we are going to choose the goal. Because if the goal is not defined, how do you choose the process? If you don't know uh, where to go, how do you choose how to go? If you have to go from, from Charlotte to maybe um, Raleigh, okay, then then first you decide you have to go from Charlotte to Raleigh. And then you 
can decide, okay, now how to go, now what are the options? Well, there's option of train, car, uh, flight, uh, not a good idea because it's such a nearby station. Uh, but if you decide to go from Charlotte to Boston, okay, now what are the options? Okay, train, uh, no, 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 in America, trains from Charlotte to Boston, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Probably we don't even have a train from Charlotte to Boston. Uh, car, okay, makes little sense. But the but the but the best thing is flight. So that's that's why goal is more important. If the goal is defined, uh, the process automatically uh, appears. The process comes by itself. Uh, you can choose a process, but if the goal is not defined. You can't do anything. And without defining the goal, even if you choose a process, you will not be able to follow it with full conviction. So the goal is important. That's why Krishna defines um, goal. So Bhavadhyatma Chate. And that's what Prabhupada says. The whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of living being. Uh, changing the heart of living being. That means, that means getting rid of bad qualities and inculcating good qualities. Getting rid of lust, anger, greed, these anarthas, and inculcating good qualities, or daivigun, like satyam, saucham, daya, tapa, and the supremely good quality that is uh, subordination or obedience to the Supreme Lord. Savayapum sam paro dharma. Paro dharma, the supreme religious principle. So that's ordinary religious principles and the supreme religious principles. That's how it goes. So that's, that is the whole point. The Prabhupada begins this purport by this line. The whole process of spiritual culture is aimed at changing the heart of living being. Of course, the first paragraph, the first paragraph of this purport says that the second canto begins with the gradual process of development of devotional service. You see, the, so Prabhupada says, of course, Prabhupada says second canto. Uh, Prabhupada says in the first chapter it is said, uh, the process of devotional service is described, stressed, hearing and chanting. And in the first canto, second chapter, uh, then, uh, then the meditation on gross conception, universal form of Lord is recommended for the beginners. And, and in the third chapter now, uh, in the third chapter, now, uh, uh, Vishnu verse, pure devotional service is described. The mature state of Vishnu service is suggested here in relationship to the change of heart, goal is described. In the second canto, first chapter, uh, process is described of devotional service. In the second canto, second chapter, uh, uh, those people who cannot follow the process of devotional service, chanting and hearing, for them an alternative process of meditating on universal form is described. And the third chapter of second canto, um, the goal of the process is described, that is the change of heart. Now, having said that, Tadashmasaram uh, Hirdayam Vatetam, okay, change of heart, okay, fine, fine. But the whole point is, Tadashmasaram, uh, what is the state of our heart now? When we're talking about change of heart, what is the state now? That's the whole point. Uh, so, uh, Bhagavatam says, Tadashma Saram. A heart is steel framed now. Steel framed. So, uh, Ashma. Ashma means steel. Saram means the essence. Heart is like even more harder than the steel. If if you take out the essence of steel or iron or stone, the essence of stone, iron or steel is this hardness. That's the tensile strength what it has, isn't it? That's why we use steel, iron or stone or anything. Because the tensile strength, the hardness is there. So the whole point is the heart is hard now. That's the whole point there. And what has made our heart hard? What is that? 
Now, Prabhupada, if you read the purport, Prabhupada sense, says uh, the false sense of lording over material world, sense of material enjoyment, or in other words, uh, offenses to the Supreme Lord. Offenses to the Supreme Lord has, or in devotion, has made our heart hard. And what is the topmost offense? Um, and what is the root of all offenses? The root of all offenses are anarthas in our heart. Lust, anger, greed. That has made... Or, and what is the root of lust, anger, greed? That is selfishness. Or the, or the, or the, the, the feeling to enjoy this material word for personal sense gratification. To enjoy this material, but that is a root. And what is the root of selfishness? That is I. I am the Lord of everything. I can take my own decisions. I don't need to consult God for taking decisions in my life, whether big or whether very ordinary day to day activities. That is the whole problem there. I, there, that, that false I, that illusory I which we have created by our own mental speculation, which is actually not I, which is not real I. We are, we have made a picture of ourself, which we are not in our own mind. And we think we are independent. Yes, this is me. Okay, who are you? This is me. I am this and this and this. I am independent. I can take my own decisions. I am free. I like to do anything what I like, I like to succeed, I like to do this. That is a false picture of ourself which we have made. Just like a madman. If you ask a madman, who are you? He will say, I am Bill Gates. Well, he's mad. Okay, who are you? I am Trump. <laughs> a person, if you ask a person who are you, I am Trump, you'll say, come on, he's crazy, mad. But the whole point is, why is thinking like that? You can say he's mad. But what's the, what's the meaning of being mad? Meaning is, he has created a picture of himself in his own mind, which is not he. And that's why he's mad. So when we make a picture of ourselves in our own mind, which are not we, then Bhagavatam calls us mad. We are servants of God. Originally, we are subordinate to Him. He is our Creator, and we are supposed to follow our Creator and never disobey Him. But now we have made a false picture in our mind. Now I have no Creator. I am not supposed to follow anybody. This is false eye. You see the point there? And that false picture of I which we have made, that's the whole problem there. Which is, and because of that false I, there's selfishness. Because of selfishness, there's lust, anger, greed. Because of lust, anger, greed, there are offenses. Because of offenses, our heart has become harder than steel. Now, somebody can ask, what do you mean by heart becoming harder? What do you mean by that? I mean to say, what's the practical meaning? Like, What's the meaning of heart becoming harder? I mean, to say, uh, if 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 if, if uh, so, if you are, uh, so if you meet one of your friend who is not a devotee, and if you say, well, your heart has become hard, he'll say, come on, what do you mean by that? I love my friends, I love my girlfriend, I love my iPhone, I love my car, and I'm very emotional person. They might say, I'm very sensitive. How can you make this comment? My heart has become hard. Well, we can prove to you, your heart has become hard. How? Yad hari naam so, Bhagavatam says, well, hari naam adhehe. Deha means by concentration of mind. If, if, uh, Bhagavatam says, when you, uh, when you focus your mind on Supreme Lord God, on God, hari naam, especially on the names of God, here names mean name form qualities of God. If you focus your mind on God, okay, there's a test. Your heart is hard. Okay, let's see. When you focus your mind on God, yad grahiya manair. Grahiya manair means, uh, means uh, 
means to accept grahya means to accept when you when you accept uh, the conception of god and start chanting his names okay come to a program start chanting names of god and still still if uh, if ecstasy doesn't take place tears fill doesn't fill the eye hair doesn't stand on end that means your heart has become hard now the test of heart becoming hard is in relationship to god now your heart might be very sensitive and very emotional and very soft in relationship to material world in relationship to matter but then that is not considered a soft heart the benchmark of soft heart is in relationship to god that's how we define now and it's very easy to understand i mean to say if you're a terrorist suppose if suppose if you're a terrorist suppose if you meet a terrorist and the terrorist is very soft very emotional for his own child his own wife his own mother then what do you say is he a hard person or is he a, is he hard hearted or is he soft hearted now mind you that terrorist has killed many people and he is a he is a most brutal terrorist ever known but he is very emotional very sensitive to his own family and his own children is he hard hearted or soft hearted well or you decide okay then you can say he is hard hearted in relationship to people around him he doesn't care about them but but he soft hearted in relationship to his own family and children that you can say at least if you want to put it like that so similarly um, well if that person is hard hearted soft hearted okay fine if that person is very sensitive and emotional if my friends is i'm very sensitive and emotional to my friends to situations okay you are soft hearted for material world okay let's say like that but as far as god and spiritual life is concerned you are hard hearted and of course bhagavatam is concerned only with spiritual life but then if you go one step forward is he really soft hearted if a person a emotional person a sentimental person uh, who is very soft hearted in relationship to this material world and has absolutely no feelings for the supreme lord and and has and 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 when he meditates on supreme lord or chants his name he is he has he has he has no no change in his mind no ecstatical symptoms no tears nothing then what do we conclude in one sense he is hard hearted why because uh, because uh, uh, because uh, because he is having emotions for people of this world for for animals for of this world for trees for this planet uh which are nice of course why he has lot of emotions for people for dogs for animals for planet because he thinks it's a nice place to live in but then it is getting destroyed and that's why he has lot of feelings for it or maybe or or he has lot of feelings for for people around him because he thinks uh, that they are very uh, so because he thinks that they are very uh, very uh, distressed or they are in a problem and that's why he has feelings for them he's sensitive um but they are nice people so you might ask him why do you have a lot of sensitiveness and emotions for people he might say well they're good people but they're in problems so yes i feel for them i feel for them i feel for poor and i feel for this planet you see the point that's that's the root cause of his softness of his heart but the whole point is the whole point is why don't you feel for god if you think they are so good and you're feeling for them god is supremely good Or why don't you feel for him? He is supremely good, and he has made his creations supremely good. But then, but then people and we, by our foolishness, are destroying this planet, destroying people and our culture and 
and everything around us. I don't feel for him. He he might also be feeling a lot of distress. Now that's the whole point there. That's why Bhagavatam says that heart is hard if it doesn't uh, if there's no tears and ecstasy doesn't take place and hairs doesn't stand on end in spite of in spite of uh, I mean to say in spite of chanting the holy in, in, in the means, or Harinam Deya, Deya means in spite of meditating on the Supreme Lord, in spite of meditating on his on his absolute pure qualities, in spite of meditating on desires of Supreme Lord, in spite of meditating on the feelings of Supreme Lord in connection with us and your heart doesn't melt, your heart doesn't feel for him, your heart is not overjoyed by experiencing absolute goodness, absolute truth, absolute love. God has millions and millions of times more love than your girlfriends or father and mother, but your heart doesn't feel that. And if you cannot feel uh, the distress of the Supreme Personality of God, of God, the distress that we are rotting from in this material world, He wants us to come back. And if you can't feel all this fine and fine and fine sentiments of the Absolute Truth, then the heart is hard. So oh, Hare Krishna, actually somebody is not muted, so I'm going to disturb somebody has to mute the phone. Please, please check your phone. It's, it's unmuted. Okay, so so that's the whole point. So that is why the test of hardness of heart. No, uh, sorry, no, no. The test of hardness of heart uh, is is actually chanting the holy names of Lord, immediately on Supreme Lord. So he says, well, your heart is hard. Now, now the whole question is, Hare Krishna, somebody's phone is not muted. Can you please check all of you? It's struggling. Yeah. No, it's okay. So, uh, so that's the whole point there. Now, now who's, uh, who's now, now what about us, all of us? Our heart is hard or soft? Well, well, the verse says it does not change when ecstasy takes place. Tears fill the eyes and hair stand on end. Prabhupada says in the purport, well. When we chant, we don't get tears. Or well, our hairs don't stand on end. At least not always. Sometimes. Uh, and ecstasy doesn't take place. So then, then what's happening? So, uh, so our heart is hard, hard or soft. Our character is a heart like stone, our character is full of lust, anger, greed, selfishness, I, false I, which is making it hard, or it's soft, what's happening? Uh, sometimes we feel ecstasy, sometimes we don't feel ecstasy. So now what to do? Uh, when we feel ecstasy, then, then you can say, when you feel ecstasy, it becomes soft, when you don't feel ecstasy, it's hard. Okay, that might be the case. That can be. Uh, but the whole point in this verse, now this verse is very important. Now you have to hear very, very carefully because now there's a twist in this whole verse. There's a big twist and that's what this verse is all about, by the way. This verse is not, this verse is not all about what I have been saying for the last half an hour. For the last half an hour, whatever I'm saying, that's not the real message. Now the real message comes which you might not have thought, by the way, which might be shock for all of you. But that's Bhagavatam all about. Bhagavatam gives you shocks because it's for Paramahamsas and we are absolute neophytes and we are trying to read Paramahamsa scripture. And if you don't get shocks, that means you're not reading Bhagavatam. So, okay, our hearts are soft or hard. Or when ecstasy takes place, it's soft. When ecstasy doesn't take, take place, then it's hard. Okay, let's say like this. But the whole point is, you know what, um, or some portion has become soft and most of the portion is hard, let's say like that. Uh, but the whole point is in the third line, 
न विक्रिएट अथवा यदा विकारो न यू सी द ट्रांसलेशन न न यू सी द संस्कृत न विक्रिएट तथा अथवा यदा विकारो न दिस वर्स इज इफ हार्ट डजन चेंज यदा विकारो वेन देर आर टीयर्स इन द आईज and when there is when the hair stand on it a proper if if you see the translation translation puts it right suddenly heart is still faint which in spite of chanting once the chanting the holy names of lord with concentration does not change in spite of chanting holy names of lord with concentration does not change now here it stops and then it says when ecstasy takes place tears fills eyes and hair stand on end that means ecstasy and change of heart are two different thing they are very two different thing now you might be thinking change of heart means ecstasy generally devotees think my heart is changing because i am feeling ecstasy oh yeah yeah i am feeling ecstasy my tears are coming in my eyes my heart is changing my heart is becoming soft no my dear brother and sister you are wrong you are wrong absolutely wrong it might might not it might and might not you don't know that's why it says it does not change when ecstasy takes place so that means even if ecstasy takes place your heart heart might not change you might be in full of ecstasy you might have tears in your eyes you might your hairs might stand on end but your heart might remain the same as it is so this means change of heart can not change of heart is not feeling ecstasy first thing. first thing is that we should not get confused that we are feeling ecstasy that means our heart is changing it might be changing it might not be changing or in other words ecstasy or tears in our eyes or of feeling bliss in kirtans but that is not the uh the standard judge whether your heart is changing or not but that you can never know and shila prabhupad quotes in the purport vishwan chakra thakur shila prabhupad specifically quotes vishwan chakra thakur and he says vishwan chakra thakur says there are many imitators who can have tears in your eyes who have hairs standing on end or not even imitators even new new deportees even new even new fights who who can experience a shadow of ecstasy who can experience ecstasy um like all of us sometimes we feel very nice we feel very happy and we feel sometimes tears comes in our eyes or we force yeah, we, or we have hair standing on end when we go and see dds in vrindavan that's all very nice but the whole point is but that you cannot say whether your heart is changing or not you cannot say because that might Uh, well that's ecstasy you're feeling ecstasy but then whether your heart is changing or not that you can't say now 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 you might question here well if your heart doesn't change how do you feel ecstasy that's the whole point if your heart doesn't change how do you feel ecstasy uh well there are two ways for that proper rights in the proper one way is imitation you can imitate you can practice <laughs> in bengal if you go people have practiced or second way is uh shadow of of ecstasy or second way is uh krishna gives ecstasy to you as a sample he is giving from his own accord it is you are not earning that ecstasy he is giving from his own accord or maybe what do we say in in exam bonus marks or what do we say um, when a uh, so when a child fails uh, grace marks it is grace it's it's a grace marks he is giving our sadhana is not up to the point that we can feel ecstasy because th- uh, that we can feel true ecstasy which is born that this word is important born no 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 in sanskrit it is called jat bhav ajat bhav that is where there are two types of bhav jat bhav ajat bhav right if you if you go in the sanskrit 
Sanskrit of this of, of this verse. If you go into Sanskrit, uh, the commentary of this verse is Jat Bhav, Ajat Bhav. And that's the whole point there. So Jat Bhav means the, which, the ecstasy which is born of a pure heart. That is ecstasy, born of a pure heart. Your heart has become pure, your heart has become soft, and then ecstasy is born of that. But then there is another ecstasy, ajat bhav. Jat means born, ajat means not born. Ecstasy, or which is which is actually not born from pure heart, because the heart is like steel frame. It is not born from a pure heart. Then from where it is born? That ecstasy. That ecstasy is born from the association of devotees who have pure heart. Or it is born from the grace of the Supreme Lord. And not your pure heart. Krishna gives. Krishna is very merciful. He sees well anyway. He's serving me. He's trying. His heart might not be pure, but his efforts are sincere. Uh, the, the sincerity of purpose is there and the goal is fixed. Okay, let me give him ecstasy. Now, why is giving this grace marks? That's another question. I'll come to that point. But the whole point is, okay, let me give. So that's the whole point. So, uh, so in spite of having seen in heart, you can experience ecstasy. And that's what this verse says. Uh, the heart is still framed in spite of chanting the holy names of Lord with concentration that we are doing. In spite of one chanting holy names of Lord with concentration, you can chant holy names with concentration. With full concentration. Hari Namadev. So, it does not change when ecstasy takes place. So you can chant with full concentration and you can also experience tears and bliss in chanting and you can say my chanting was so nice today, I had tears but then the whole point is your heart has not changed after that whole experience of Kirtan after that nice chanting after that everything nice still after some time you get thoughts of lust, anger, envy, greed offensive thoughts against Supreme Lord and Vaishnavas absolutely you become absolutely crazy what happened come on what happened in 10 minutes what happened in 15 minutes what about that ecstasy so that's the whole point so the aim is not to chant with concentration you see the point that's not the aim there now that's the whole point I'm trying to bring generally we confuse a process with the goal and that's why we are not advancing because because actually two days back one devotee asked me Prabhuji, we don't feel we are advancing. What's happening? We are doing everything. We are chanting with concentration. We are coming to Mangalati. We feel nice in kirtans. We feel nice in, in lectures. But we are not advancing. What's happening? I told him, well, the problem is you don't know what's the goal. You don't know what's the goal. Now he said, he said well, the goal is love of God. But the whole point is, uh, okay, uh, that's not the immediate goal that's the final ultimate goal but what's the immediate goal and uh, well okay the immediate goal is change of heart or in other words the immediate goal is change of a nature of character or in other words uh, getting rid of asuri gun bad qualities and inculcating on good qualities and the supremely good quality of obedience to Supreme Lord. That should happen. So we should not judge our advancement by 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 concentration on holy names. That's not the point. But of course we should chant with concentration. And we should not judge our advancement in devotion by ecstasy or tears in the eyes. No, that's not the point. And Prabhupada says in, in this purport, uh, both Vishwanchakri Thakur and Rupa Goswami, they, they actually, uh, they have actually delineated uh, the symptoms of, uh, of, real, of real advancement, the symptoms of change of heart. So how do we know whether our heart is changing or not? Not by ecstasy. 
even if you experience ecstasy you can't you don't know what's happening and that might be illusion also you might fall in that actually ecstasy in, in devotional service that might be a trap of maya also now krishna gives from his grace ecstasy but then maya uses that grace to delude you maya is tricky he can use things given by god to delude you this material world is made by krishna to help us get liberated but maya is using the same material world which is actually a grace of god to us to help us get liberated uh these maya is using the same material world to actually delude us to put us into illusion so krishna by his grace just as krishna by his grace creates gives us made this material world to serve him and may, and help us to make pure and liberated similarly uh, by the same time maya uses the same material world to delude us similarly krishna's by his grace gives us ecstasy uh but then maya uses the same ecstasy to delude us now how because when we get ecstasy when we get tears in our eyes we think oh we are advancing my heart is changing but no my dear it's not changing you don't know what's happening well by the way why does krishna gives ecstasy why did krishna create this material world out of his grace so that we can use this material world to actually serve him and learn what is service and what do you mean by being servant of krishna and then the love love of god so what do you mean so similarly why does krishna give ecstasy so that we can use this ecstasy now here is the whole point keep it in mind krishna gives us ecstasy out of his grace he doesn't do anything randomly he gives us this ecstasy even though we are not qualified for that even though heart is not pure it still frames still he gives as a sample as advertisement as a grace why to so that we can use this ecstasy just as we use this material world to serve him we can use this ecstasy to serve him that's the whole idea there we can use the ecstasy to actually uh so when we feel ecstasy while chanting we feel bliss in kirtans we feel we have tears uh, sometimes when we chant when we see deities here here standing on end what should we do we should not think a heart is becoming pure no we should think at that time we uh, that we have to make our heart pure krishna has is giving us krishna is so nice that that we should think krishna is so nice that he is is giving tears in my eyes these are not my tears he's giving me bliss this is not my bliss he's giving me uh, ecstasy and happiness is my hairs are standing on end but this is not my qualification this is not me this this is not this is not the strength of my chanting and hearing um this is krishna giving me krishna is so nice and now uh he is so nice and he is my lord and he is my master we should use his ecstasy to become attached to him he is my lord he is my master i have to now serve him i will follow whatever he says even if i am tempted even if i am obsessed i will leave all my temptations i will resist it for my dear lord krishna because he is my master that feeling should come the feeling should not be when you feel ecstasy and bliss oh yes yes i have done i am becoming pure no my dear you're wrong you have to become pure when you're feeling ecstasy that's the whole point you're not you have not earned that ecstasy by your purity your heart is still steel framed and the proof is that after some time you become the same same thoughts same desires same lust there's something wrong in our understanding that's this whole verse all about and then uh, and and then this verse says here 
leave all the attachments and in fact shila prabhupa writes in the purport shila prabhupa writes in the purport how do we know that a heart is becoming pure not by ecstasy not by concentration of holy name by nine symptoms prabhupa says in the purport by nine symptoms you can know whether a heart is becoming pure or not and that is shanti shanti means the first is cessation of material desires that we have to work on okay now we have to work to get free of material desires shanti river thakalatvam uh, we'll not waste even a single second now wow, krishna is so nice he's giving ecstasy even if we don't deserve i will serve him every second i will not waste even a single second that's avert kalatvam by this symptom we'll know my heart is becoming pure shanti river thakalatvam virakti navana shunyata asha vanda samutkantha naam gane sada ruchi Krishna Guna Akhyane Priti Dadva Sati Sthale You can go and see Chaitanya Charitamrita Prabhupada quotes in the purport Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Lila 23 chapter 18-19 verse In the purport Prabhupada is is mentioning the reference You can go and have a look Nine symptoms of advancement in devotional service Only by those nine symptoms We can understand whether heart is changing or not Not by mere concentration don't be fooled by that that today i have fully concentrated on chanting so i'm advancing no my dear might not be or today i felt so much ecstasy so i'm advancing no my dear not your heart can still be steel framed as before how do you know whether it is becoming pure okay by this nine symptoms okay yeah chanting with concentration is necessary that's a process if you feel ecstasy that's very nice because that's the grace of god on you but then you have to be focused on the goal the change of heart that that actually purifying your heart and for that you have to work for that you have to work uh work um and for that you have to have right perception and knowledge that you have to serve lord we have to serve him in spite of all reverses in spite of all calamities in spite of all your fears in spite of all your hangings and temptations you have to keep on going that's what you have to do you have to work on yourself you have to fight with maya there's a war going on you have to understand the weakness of the enemy of maya a true fighter understands the weakness of enemy otherwise he'll, he'll never going to be win the war so all those things we have to do and then we have to make our heart we have to change our heart and the symptoms of change of heart are nine symptoms and the first symptom is shanti that is that is detachment and absence of material desires that's the point there our material desires should reduce <coughs> that should go on even after ble- that 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 that's the most that's the first thing uh, prabhupa says prabhupa says the test of spiritual advancement is that you will not get disturbed a devotee will never get disturbed if you're getting disturbed in even in i mean to say people get disturbed in small things there's a fight between devotees there's something going on uh, within devotees and they get disturbed you know this is the whole point there so then uh, then then what's the advancement there then how can you say you're getting advanced come on then don't fall into illusion you can say i'm getting advanced because i'm getting bliss come on my dear lord my, my dear brothers and sisters whatever it is <laughs> my dear devotees it's not like that the case prabhupa says you should not be disturbed in the greatest of problems but here we are getting disturbed in even small problems somebody devotee says you something and you get disturbed come on what's that spiritual elevation that's not spiritual platform that's not bhagavatam something else is going on 
Your heart is still steel framed. It doesn't bend. When a, when a wind comes, soft plants, they bend and flow with the wind. But the plants with the trees which are strong and stout, they get broken and disturbed and tattered. So steel framed heart, when even small disturbance comes, it gets broken. It gets tattered. But a soft heart, a pure, sublime, soft heart, free of lust, anger, greed, envy, all foolish, selfish desires, uh, soft due to, due to pure attachment to the service of Lord, that kind of heart, when disturbance comes, when the wind of disturbance comes, it just bends and flows with the circumstances. And, and doesn't get cracked, doesn't get disturbed. And the wind of disturbance, it just passes by. And the devotee is undisturbed. That is called Shanti. That's that, that, by that we can understand. Our heart is changing. So yeah, please go and read this verse. It's a beautiful verse. It's a very revolutionary verse. And right there in the translation you can, you can if you read prayerfully you can understand. Certainly that heart is still friend which in spite of one's chanting the holy names of Lord with concentration which we are doing which you are trying to do does not change which is not happening in us which our heart is not changing. When ecstasy takes place tears fills the eyes hair stand on end. Yes, ecstasy is taking place at least some sample of ecstasy, shamshad of ecstasy, tears sometimes comes, here standing, the heart is not changing. So what to do, I have told you, or to, how to change the heart, okay first know what you have to do, that's the first step, to do something first you have to know what you have to do, that's the first step, to achieve something first you have to know what you have to achieve, that's the first step, so that's the first step. What we are doing by this process of chanting and hearing and ecstasy and whatever it is, what we are doing, we have to change our heart. Our sobhava must become daivi, divine, and not demoniac and asuri. That has to change. Our habits must change. Our our whole temperament must change, our nature must change. That's what should be happening, we should not be disturbed in any condition. That's what, uh, that, that should change. And, and, and how to, that, that's the first step, you should know that's what we are doing, you have to change it. Completing rounds, hearing, feeling ecstasy, Kirtan's place, that's a part of the game, that's not the goal, that's not what we are coming here to do. That's a process, but that's, a, the goal is that. Why we are doing that? That first thing you have to understand that. And then, and then how to do it? How to do it? Yes, then how to do it? Okay, fine. Then you focus on service of Supreme Lord. All this is to help us serve Him. Hare Krishna, Krishna, please engage me in your service, isn't it? Ecstasy, bliss, Krishna is so nice. Now I will serve Him more. You see the point, that whole we have to serve Him and nourish and complement and supplement our sentiments of service to Him. That's what we have to do. That's our heart will become pure. And understand the weakness of your enemy, Maya. Or the strength of your enemy. And the strength of the enemy lies in lust, anger, greed and selfishness. Your own selfishness is the strength of Maya. That is her strength, which is in you which is not with her. And if you understand her strength and the weakness, and then you have to not give in to your own selfishness. That's the whole point. Not give in to your own temptations. You have to resist. If you want to, if you want to change your heart, resist. And then serve. That's the whole point. And how do you know your heart is changing? Okay, there are nine symptoms. The most important symptom are two symptoms. How do you know heart is changing? You will get detachment from this material world. And you will not waste even a single second uh, except serving the Supreme Lord. That's what should be happening. You will get that fire to serve Him. And another symptoms you can read there. So that's what this whole verse is all about. 
I want to discuss this. Uh, okay, thank you very much. I'm done. Time is up. And if there is any question, you can ask me. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Kija. Prabhuji, I have one question. Is, uh, do you have a minute? Yeah. Um, yes. So in, in Bhagavad Gita, we talk about uh, giving the fruits to Krishna. And, uh, you know, when we are uh, full-time working, you know, we earn that money and uh, we do use that for the service of Krishna, but not all the money is utilized. Uh, and we raise our children, so we say we bring up Krishna conscious children, so we use a part of the money there. Uh, but, you know, in terms of procuring the house, we use it for the service of Krishna also uh, by bringing devotees in the house and all that. Uh, but how do we justify Prabhuji? Like, you know, the, the fruits are given to Krishna in that case. Like, you know, we still I use that. Yeah. Some I can understand your point. I mean, to say, as a congregation, as a householder, you have to use money for your house, for your car, and for yourself, so how do you justify that? Well, the whole idea is follow scriptures. Scripture says, uh, scripture says, 50% use for yourself, 50% give it to Krishna. Then it is justified. Justification doesn't come by feeling. Justification comes with following the norms which are made, isn't it? So suppose if you go to company and company says, okay. Uh, 25% you can keep for yourself, but 25% you have to you have to give us, uh, and we will put in your LIC policy or what, and 25% tax. That's that's a norm. If you follow the norm, you're justified. If you don't follow the norm and you do by your own feelings, you're not justified. So, otherwise you'll always be in doubt. So scripture says 50% you should put in service of God. 50% for yourself. Oh, well, 50% is too much. <laughs> That's the whole point. Okay, scripture says, okay, if you cannot do that, 40, okay, not 30, okay, not 20, okay, not minimum 10%. Manu Samita says, minimum 10% should go okay. in the service of... So if you can do that, minimum 10%, then you're justified. That's all the rest you can use for yourself. But that's minimum, I mean to say. Uh, then uh, you can then you can maybe increase a uh, 15, 20, whatever. But whenever you 10% you're doing, then you're justified. Then you don't have to be confused. Just keep on doing, that's all. But but, but, the, but the whole point is, uh, we should try to increase that. Uh, that uh, I mean to say 10% and then try to increase. That is, then you're justified. Because Shastra says minimum. Uh, okay. So, for example, like Prabhupada says, minimum 16 rounds, okay? So, if you simply chant 16 rounds, uh, keep on chanting, then... Uh, uh, so, in spite of having time with you, uh, leaving services, then doesn't make sense. Then, then we're not justified. But if we have services and we don't have time, we chant 16 rounds, okay, fine. But if we have time and we can do more and we still we're not chanting, then we're not justified. So, that's the whole point, minimum 10%. That's okay. what it is. Yes, Prabhuji. Another question I have is with regards to the uh, surrender, the word surrender. Uh, when you when you say I surrender on surrender on to me, uh, does it mean? Um, I mean, I know uh, you know we, we there is the definition that talks about plus uh, do things that are pleasing to Krishna, not don't do things that are non pleasing. Is that the verse that I need to follow for the surrender to understand what surrender means? What's that question? I can't understand. What's that? What does What does it mean? Uh, you know, what does it mean to surrender? What do you do to, to oh. say that you surrendered? Well, uh, Prabhupada says there are six symptoms of surrender: Anukulasya sankalpa, pratikulasya, varjanam, nakshyati, divishvaso, vapravarnam, tatha, adnakshya pakarpanne, iti sanvidhashar nagadi. Now you can read that in folio, but the whole point is the two main points in surrender is accepting what is favorable and rejecting what is not favorable to advancement in devotional service. But the whole trick here is ex accepting what is favorable without hesitation. Isn't it? Sometimes we accept but with hesitation. Uh, so that's not real surrender. And rejecting what is favorable to devotional... Uh, 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 so, sorry. Uh, 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 so rejecting what is not favorable to devotional service that too without hesitation, because sometimes 
uh, we don't want to reject but well because guru has said so I have to reject or maybe because it's offensive so I have to leave so okay that is surrender uh, or that is some resemblance of surrender or that is a beginning of surrender but if you really talk about surrender then accept what is favorable to devotional service without hesitation immediately and reject what is not favorable to devotional service immediately without hesitation without hesitation that's a nap there and that will define the degree of surrender that will define the degree of surrender yes. person uh, who is having uh, uh, the lesser the hesitation to accept and reject the more the surrender that's how Got surrender Got it. And then last question, Prabhuji. I uh, hope it's okay. Um, you yeah. know, I just need to know your, uh, you know, where your lecture is on the Hare Krishna, the series. Like, how do you, you know, yeah, you you said that uh, Yoga Swami talks about that, you know, and uh, I just want to know how that sequence of Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, oh, Hare Hare. Yeah. Hare. That, uh, I, I don't know how to tell you, but the, but the whole point is okay. Uh, so you probably you can read. Uh, the book by Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhajan Rehse, um, in that you will find um, exactly I have forgotten where it is. But uh, Jeeva Goswami has also written a commentary on, on holy names, but that's in Sanskrit. I don't know where this is translated in English. Uh, oh, but okay, you don't have a recording, Sabuji. I was just thinking maybe if you have a recording, I'll go there. Uh, recording um, of what's the sequence of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Um, I don't think I have not. I have not done. I have not done. Oh. <laughs> I'll record oh. and put it. On. So, uh, so actually, you know what you can do. Uh, uh, so I don't know devotees who are listening on the call, but uh, but you can go uh, on my website uh, purdevotionalservice.com or my YouTube channel Keshavanan, and mm -hmm. probably you can uh, so you can type holy name there and. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, there should be a lecture, probably very old lecture. I have spoken, but I don't know in which lecture. But if you type holy name in my YouTube channel, then probably might get it. Okay. You might get. Hmm. Okay. Thank you okay, so Ajay. much, Prabhuji. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dhanod Pranams. Uh, thank you so much, Prabhuji. Wonderful class. Um, so the question is uh, from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, we have a verse where, uh, where Krishna says that uh, what does uh, repression accomplish? Swabhavastu uh, pravartite. Everyone is going to act according to the nature, acquired nature. So, um, so I was under the impression that the swabhava of a person, Krishna is telling that cannot be changed. No, uh, no. Uh, Krishna is there telling uh, uh, what does repression accomplish? Re re repression uh, is by uh, by artificial means. That's what Krishna is mentioning. Repression by yoga, by meditation, by psychological counseling, or by motivational gurus, isn't it? That's also repression <laughs> in one sense. Okay, you can do it. You can do that. You're not this. That's and you're repressing your whole identity. Oh no, no. I am strong. I'm not weak. But actually you're weak. So that's also repression, isn't it? So there are two types of repression. One is positive repression, one is negative repression. So negative repression is, is in yoga and meditation uh, where you're really repressing. And positive repression is all these motivation gurus who are, who are actually repressing your, your whole identity by actually boosting you up and making you a superhero in your own eyes and actually fooling yourself. So that's repression. That kind of repression is talking. Because, uh, uh, because otherwise, uh, Krishna also says in Bhagavad Gita so many times, control your senses. Now what about that? So Krishna says, uh, Krishna says, uh, Indriya, Indriya Nigraha. That was so many times Krishna says, control your senses. And Bhagavad Gita begins, Kamesha, Krodesha, Rajoguna, Samuva. Krishna first tried to subdue lust. What about that? Then, then there is a contradiction. Why Krishna is saying subdue lust? So the whole point is we have to repress, but, but, the, but not by artificial means. We have to uh, actually be alert and repress uh, whatever uh, by, uh, by 
taking help of devotional service, which is a real process. So by devotional service, we'll get the power to conquer lust and whatever our habits. And um, or maybe just like you see the point 16 rounds and four eggs. What about that? So if, uh, so if repression doesn't accomplish anything, then why four eggs? Then why no illicit sex, no intoxication? And you might say, come on, this is, this is a big repression, isn't it? No illicit sex. What do you do about that? What do you do about that? The, that is clear suppression. Uh, so what's happening? Krishna says there. So then, then we have to solve, then, you have to, then, then we must harmonize. So the whole point is, uh, okay, by the help of devotional service, you can overcome these forces and your habits, that's not repression by the way, then, then in that case we will not call it repression if you uh, so we are really picky about this word repression and if Krishna says what can repression accomplish, okay fine repression doesn't accomplish anything, we, in, we are not repressing there, by, by the help of devotional service uh, we, are, we, are, we are actually trying, uh, devotional service is, is trying to help us purify the, those desires. That's not repression. If, if somebody is really skeptic uh, uh, about the word repression, or maybe sublimating the desires in the Supreme Lord. And that's how things change. But at the same time, initially you have to suppress. Isn't it? I mean, to say otherwise there, there's no point of four rugs. Uh, nobody's devotional service is so strong that so initially you have to suppress uh, but then we have the help of devotional service uh, which will then slowly sublimate our desires in the Supreme Lord um, and uh, and Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita Jan, uh, so what's that verse 8 chapter 2nd last verse uh, uh, what's that verse I forgot 2nd uh, last or 7 chapter 2nd last something like that um, I'm just forgetting, forgetting that verse. Jan. Anyway, whatever it is. So, uh, oh, uh, so you know that verse, uh, 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 Brahma Karma Sabhavajam. What's that verse? Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how how that begins? Janma. Uh, Janma, ah, okay, okay, uh, Janma, no, 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 uh, I, I was just, just getting lost in that verse, anyway, whatever it is, so, so, uh, 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 so, so, uh, so, uh, so, so that's that word subhav comes there, and now uh, now the whole point is that that is that is Brahmanical qualification. Shamo uh, damo uh, socham. See there, shamo. Shamo means well, making your mind peaceful, not giving into temptations. Dama dama means what? Controlling senses, and then Brahma karma subhavacham. Then, then you will be able to actually. Uh, actually engage yourself in Supreme Lord. And uh, so actually your question is dealt by Rupa Goswami also in Extra Devotion. Prabhupada says, Prabhupada says initially repression and suppression is required to actually follow the process. Otherwise we will not be able, able to follow the process. If, if there are no four regulatory principles, no, if suppose Prabhupada, Prabhupada would have said, okay, what repression can accomplish? Okay, chant Hare Krishna, uh, become like Osho Rajneesh, you know, isn't it that there's a whole process of meditate, but then sex is allowed, uh, wine is allowed, everything. Uh, he, he said like that. So Prabhupada would have said, okay, what kind of repression? But then there's a whole contradiction. So, uh, so Nectar of Devotion, Rupa Goswami says, initially suppression is required at least to follow the process. Otherwise, you'll not be able to f even follow the process. These forces are so strong. But the whole point is, Krishna is saying only repression will not accomplish anything. That's the whole point there. Only suppression. Initially you follow the, you, you do some repression, suppression, and you be careful to, to, to actually remain away from all these nonsense things. And then follow the process, and then the process will take over, slowly. 
and then you don't need to refresh. So until the process doesn't take over and uh, 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 so and you don't flow with the process, you have to suppress. And that is the whole difference between Vaidhi Bhakti and Raghunoga Bhakti. In Raghunoga Bhakti, the process takes over. In Vaidhi Bhakti, you are following the process. But in Raghunoga Bhakti, um, uh, the process is following you. There's a difference. You are flowing with the process. So you don't need to repress. The process will do everything. But in Vaidhi Bhakti, you are following the process. But to follow the process, you have to remain away from complete nonsense things. And you have to really suppress and suppress your temptations. You have to do that. And that's practical. We see that. Otherwise, the process is lost. And that's when Vaidhi Bhakti, there is a little fight. There's a fight in the mind. Uh, but at the same time, the process of devotional service uh, because there's help from Supreme Lord, it is not uh, just repression. We'll be able to do it. So that's what Krishna says. Only suppression will not accomplish anything. You have to have a process uh, which can help you actually in suppressing and at the same time which can actually take over uh, your, uh, your soul, your mind and then you don't need to suppress which will carry you now. Rather than you carrying the process, now process carries you. That's the difference between Vedi Raghunoga. So, and that's why scripture says you have to enter Raghunoga Bhakti. Otherwise you can't achieve lot. But at the same time, nobody understands the meaning of Raghunoga Bhakti. The whole meaning of Raghunoga Bhakti is uh, you have to let the process take over you. The, in other words, you have to have Abhinivesh for the process. That's the whole point. Now, uh, now we have Dutya Abhinivesh. Now, now our Abhinivesh, Abhinivesh, uh, so what do we say, obsession? Now we are obsession for this material world, but when you are obsession for the process, the process will be obsessed about you. That's the whole there, uh, the, the difference, and that's, that's the question. Uh, that's what Krishna is talking here about. Krishna is talking, mere repression will not help. Only repression will not help. You have to have a process. Uh, so, the whole point is, uh, the whole point is Krishna is saying here, yeah, the goal is not repression. Krishna is saying, repression will not help. The whole means is, for people, for yogis and for those people, for them, repression is their aim, isn't it? For yogis and jnanis, okay. Control your senses, that's the aim. No, that will not help. Our thing is not that. We are not repressing, our aim is not repression. Our, we are trying to repress to actually do something else. We are, we are repressing as a favorable activity to follow the process. That's not the process. Krishna is talking in terms of process here. If your process is repression, that is not, that, that's not going to work. Our process is not repression, our process is devotion. We are using suppression and repression as favorable to following the process. Then Krishna says, okay, that's fine. And that Krishna says, Kamesha, Krodesha, and four rags and all, everything. Then it then it harmonizes. Is it, is it clear? Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Uh, Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, uh, Prabhuji, I have a question. Um, so, uh, so here uh, in the purport, uh, Sri Prabhupada, he writes, uh, uh, out of uh, one of the nine qualities, uh, he says attraction for living in the land of the Lord. So, attraction. what is it? <laughs> attraction for living in the land of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that is one of the nine symptoms of uh, of change of heart. That is preeti uh, tadvasati sthale, isn't it? That's what yes, yes, is talking. Yes, 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 yes. So, what does yeah. this exactly mean? Yeah. So that means that actually natural devotion explains. Preeti that Vasati that explains that that means uh, that means attraction. Of course, uh, the uh, the literal meaning is attraction to Vrindavan. Uh, we should be attracted to actually uh, stay in Vrindavan. We should be attracted to Vrindavan, the land of Vrindavan, Govardhan, Mansi Ganga, Yamuna. Uh, we should feel, as Prabhupada says, Vrindavan is my home. That's one meaning. We should, that feeling should be there. In this place, my home is not my home. Vrindavan is my home. We should feel our home is 
a foreign land. First, that feeling should be there. Second thing is, um, but that explanation is at the level of feeling, but at the, at the level of activity, action, um, the understanding of this line is that uh, uh, that uh, that we should uh, that we should uh, 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 actually make Vrindavan famous all around the world. Just like Prabhupada says, Pra Prabhupada says, for me to live in Vrindavan is Maya. Prabhupada said, uh, the uh, the real attraction to Vrindavan can be shown when you don't live in Vrindavan, but when you distribute Vrindavan. Now, what about that? Because because whatever you like, you try to distribute it, isn't it? So if you like uh, something, then you go to your friends, oh my god, this is like this, that, like this, I like that, oh come on, this movie is so nice, you should also see. So that's the whole point there. So at the level of actions, uh, this line means, uh, attraction for Supreme Lord means to distribute Vrindavan, and not to stay actually. Distribute it. Give Vrindavan to others. Inform others about Vrindavan. Inform others about the land of uh, God, which is pure and sublime, which is our home, which is home for everybody. That's at the level of actions. And, and then the meaning at the, at the level of thoughts, thinkings, thinking, uh, that means, uh, uh, at the level of thoughts, this line means, okay, uh, having attraction for the land of Supreme Lord. This means having an attraction to serve Supreme Lord because because the land because Vrindavan is all about service. Vrindavan is actually all about service, nothing else. So at the level of thought, if we are always uh, trying to serve Supreme Lord, or we have uh, see uh, see the whole point is Vrindavan is always glorified because footprints of Krishna are there. That, that's where Vrindavan has become blessed. Uh, and, uh, and that's the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th canto, where it says, uh, Krishna, Krishna, incarnate, uh, Krishna incar, incarnated in Vrindavan and his footprints, his lotus feet blessed the land of Vrindavan. Gopis also say like that. So Vrindavan is Vrindavan because of lotus feet of the Supreme Lord. Uh, imprints are there. Uh, so the whole point is, attraction to Vrindavan is attraction to the uh, footprints of Supreme Lord and attraction to the footprints of Supreme Lord uh, or Lotus of Supreme Lord is attraction to his service so just as every particle of Vrindavan is serving Supreme Lord uh, at the level of thoughts this line means uh, uh, well I should also become a particle at his Lotus feet uh, Ashley, uh, what's that Ayinanda um, Tanujakin Karam Patatam Abhisham Yabhamam Vadao so, the dust of Vrindavan is at lotus feet, I also become, want to become dust for lotus feet. That means I want to serve you perpetually, birth after birth. So, that, uh, the, this, these are three meanings of this line, at the level of feelings, thoughts and actions. That's all it means. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, yeah. Hare Krishna. Okay, so... Somebody... Thank you, Prabhuji, for your wonderful class. Um, so, if there are so, any questions or uh, comments for Prabhuji? Yes, um, well, one comment is, uh, <clears throat> this was such an incredibly amazing class. I mean, I always love your classes, but this was exceptionally amazing. Um, just, just to um, revisit one part of your question, about, one part of your answer about repression. Um, when you were saying, when you were talking about the artificial ways of repressing, um, you were saying that there was negative ways in which to do it and positive ways. In which to do it, yeah. Yeah. and so and and so um, that's where I need to get a little bit of clarification. Let's say um, motivational speakers and so on, right? We call them artificially, I mean, positively artificial, right? Because 
Anyway, can you just explain again yeah, what the difference yeah, is? Uh-huh. Yeah, actually, yeah, actually, you see, it's, you see the point is, uh, so, one, uh, so one way is negatively repressing. Uh, that means, well, uh, well you, you close your eyes like yogis and then you start suppressing your desires and that's your goal, that's all. That is uh-huh. negative way of repressing. Uh-huh. Or maybe uh, you go to, or yeah, but the positive way of repressing, I can think of two examples. For example, psychological counseling. So you are depressed and, you, and then you go to a psychologist and then, he, and then by artificial techniques, He's trying to tell you don't get depressed and this and that. But that's an artificial way of, dep- uh, of repressing, but that's a positive way because it, it feels it is positive. I mean to say you feel, you know, say so psychologist will say, yeah, you're nice and this, but then you have to overcome this and then that will be good. Then anyway, you're repressing. So that is, uh, that is a positive way of repression. Uh, and another more better example than that, which is, more relevant, which is actually difficult to understand, is motivational gurus. Motivational gurus, what they're doing is, they are trying to tell you, see, you are a superhero, and you can do anything. You are mm-hmm. a Uberman, and, and nobody can stop you. Don't listen to anybody. Don't listen to any advice. Now, the whole problem with this is, uh, this kind of advice is actually suppressing his own nature and his own, uh, his own weaknesses. You see the point? He's not accepting that he's weak in something. Uh, rather than that, rather than accepting that, well, okay, I can't do this. That's all finished. My sabhava is not like that. That's all. Mm-hmm. It's clear. But then, mm-hmm. then you come and then you say, no. You have, uh, you have to suppress that, that, that thing in yourself and you can do anything. So, so that feels positive. That feels positive, yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But but actually, but actually, that's repression because uh, because Krishna says that that the best thing is to accept what you are, not uh, not not try to do what others are doing. But then you will get frustrated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So in the end, in the end, people keep on thinking like that, and they get frustrated because they cannot do because uh, because they don't have the ability uh, to do that. And rather yeah. than accept, I don't have the ability. Uh, come on, I can do this. this come on, that's nonsense. Krishna says people are made. Uh, people carry impressions. People have their own abilities. Better to accept and better do whatever minimum you can do and better be satisfied. Isn't it? Better be satisfied yeah. what you can do and be happy. So that, mm-hmm. is, that is something positive repression. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so whether mm-hmm. we're talking about whether we're talking about negative or positive repression, both involve like kind of um, denying our true nature, you know? With, yeah, right, with, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that's what is happening. We are denying uh-huh. our nature. Because, because with negative repression, you know, you're, you're suppressing desires, but it's the nature of the soul to have desires. So that's, repre- yeah. that's artificial. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then with, yeah, absolutely. With, with positive repression, um, you know, you're denying, you know, your your actual qualities, you know, and trying to pretend that you have qualities that you don't. So that's the yeah, kind of right. Thing. Yeah, right, right, like that. Okay, and then also just one last thing. One last thing is um, when you're talking about, you know, when the when the heart changes. And rather than you carrying the process, the process carries you, the difference between the two is, seems to be like a person's level of taste for devotional service. So when, when we don't have taste, that's when we are the one carrying the process. Like we are fighting our lack of taste in order to do devotional service. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And then, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, correct yeah, understanding. That's correct understanding. Yeah, 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 yeah. Perfect timing mean, to say it's it's a matter of taste or ruchi. Yeah. If you don't have taste, then 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 probably you are carrying the process. But when you yeah. have taste in the process, yeah, of course. I mean, to say that's that's yeah, that's that's uh, that's to the point. Uh, that that's one of the way we can know whether we are carrying the process or process is carrying us. That that that's one of the way. An important way. Or is there other ways to know? 
Yeah, there are other ways. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can devote a lecture on that one. What are the ways oh. that you know? Oh, okay. How to do that? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you very, very much, Prabhu. Like I said, it's unbelievable. You're always unbelievable for me, but today was really one of the top. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so um, I think we can end here, Mataji, or who is there? Yeah. Vekishna, is there anyone have any questions or comments for Krishna? in the last time? Okay. I think we can end the call here. Let's pay our obeisances to Prabhuji and all the Vaishnavas. Vancha Kalpata Rikya Shriya Krupa Singhya Seva Patita Anam Pavanatiya Vaishnava Kiya Nama Nama. Anandha Kati Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Jai. Srila Sarvatam Ki Jai. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Srila Anam Pavati Ki Jai. Thank you so Thank much, Prabhuji. We look forward to your Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Thank you so much, Prabhuji.